how do you think about biologic versus chronologic age in concept and in practice? Yeah, so so on the ride over here, Rich and I were talking about that. I don't believe there is such a thing as bio, one thing as biological age. I think there is potentially an age of your heart, an age of your liver, an age of your lungs, an age of your brain, but I don't see why we wouldn't simply call it health. In other words, you know, I, I got one of these age, epigenetic age clocks done on me a while ago, but I didn't know what to make out of it. You know, I thought, is this just flattery? Am I just, I want to do this. So it's, or did it really tell me something? You must've got a good was, result if you thought it was flattery. Huh? You must've got a good result if I you got thought a it was good flattery. Result, but, <laughs> but, 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 um, years old. you know, that's, uh, that may be the point of, <laughs> yeah. of, of the yeah. whole thing, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm dubious about some number uh, that is different than, I know I'm in good health. You know, for my age, I'm in very good health. So I knew that already. Now I have a number for it. I don't put much credence let, in let that Let me number. agree with, with Steve, and, but just put it in slightly different terminology. It's a matter of taking a very rich, complex uh, data set and trying to collapse it to a number. So if someone wants to know how healthy I am, he or she would need information. How good is my eyesight? Uh, how good is my hearing? How good is various kinds of cognitive activities? My aerobic endurance, my ability to my joints, all of that, all of that is pertinent to how my health is, and also about projected future health. Then there's no need once you've got that information, which is very rich, to say, ah, there's a number, a single number, a real number on a point on the number line that condenses that in any useful way. The notion 40, 50 years ago that biological age was not the same as chronological age pretend for a little while was useful. It emphasized that there might well be 60-year-old people who were unusually like youthful people and 60-year-old people who were unusually like 70-year-old people with my drug or my genetic mutant or whatever helped to discriminate those people or change them in some way. I can slow your biological aging process. That's a discussion that was maybe of interest 40 years ago and has, it's now time to drop the notion, let alone the silly notion that you can count that biological age, that number which some people, too many people still think is a value. You can figure out what it is by measuring something, transcriptions or epigenetic markers or something. I can do it and give you personally your personal biological age that's a waste of everyone's time, and it also distracts attention from things that actually are important and need to be thought about. <laughs> I, I, I got to talk because <laughs> I think I think I disagree fundamentally, and I'm surprised. But it, this will be an interesting conversation. So I agree that the idea of a kit that you can buy to measure biological age, first of all, the, the stuff that's out there doesn't work, and we should can and should talk about I that. Wanna, yeah. But also, I sort of agree with the idea that reducing it to one number. Well, conceptually, I think it's possible. I think in reality is going to be really, really difficult to do. But do I believe that there is a biological aging process that is different from chronological aging? Absolutely. Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, I well, didn't... it sounded like you guys were both saying no. no you didn't no, think no, it was no, no, a real no. thing. I agree with that completely. I, that's You can agree with that and not like the idea of a number that sure. constitutes your biological sure. age. Okay. Yeah. So okay. there's two things I would that, that kind of make me feel pretty confident in this idea. One is, and this is the example I use a lot among the general public, is just look at dogs compared to people, right? Everybody's familiar with the idea that one human year is about seven dog years. What does that mean? It means that dogs age about seven times faster than people do. But of course, chronological time is the same between dogs and people. It's the biological aging process. And so you can look across the animal kingdom and see this. And dogs get almost all of the same diseases and functional declines that we do at the tissue and organ level, but also at the whole body level. Um, and we also know now there are single genes that significantly modulate what I would call the rate of aging. Now, maybe we have a different no, meaning to completely. what we mean that. No, I agree entirely, okay. yeah. So the fact that that's possible, <laughs> right. DAF2, we've talked about DAF2 a couple of times, TOR, we can turn these things up, turn them down, and animals across the evolutionary spectrum seem to age at different rates by modulating single genes. So I don't know of any other explanation other than that there is this process, which we call biological aging, that 
can be changed and, and the rate can be sped up or slowed down. Can it be reversed? That's an interesting question. Maybe we'll get to that. But, but I think the process is real. I think it's just really, really complicated. And we probably only understand 5% of it at this point. For me, the challenge is I, I kind of land where, where Rich was, which is if a patient says to me, hey, why aren't you doing this biologic age clock on me? Yeah. <laughs> My response is, well, I know your VO2 max, I know your zone two, I know your muscle mass, I know your visceral fat, I know we did a very complicated movement assessment on you, I understand your balance, I understand uh, like your lipids, your insulin, like I know these 57 things about you and I can tell you individually on each of them how you're doing, that number doesn't tell me a single new piece of information. But what if you were to come up with, and then you probably do this in your head, right? You come up with a, some sort of composite, right? You probably don't sit down and weight each of those things and come to one number, but you come up with some sort of composite picture of health based on all of those things. That's a different biological aging clock. I think sometimes we conflate, and in part this is because of the way that irresponsible people in the field and marketers have done this. We conflate the epigenetic tests with biological aging clocks. There are all sorts of flavors of biological aging clocks, including things like frailty indices or metrics of a whole bunch of functional markers. So I think those probably are pretty good readouts of biological age. Again, can you combine them all to get to one number that's meaningful for every person? That's much harder to do. Yeah. Tell, tell us about your experience because <laughs> this was, I thought, you did, you did what I wanted to do, but I've been too lazy yeah. to do. Yeah. In fact, we, we, we exchanged emails at one point about doing this and each coming yeah. up with different names. So yeah. So what I did was I um, tested four different direct to consumer biological age kits. They were all epigenetic biological age tests, four different companies. And I did duplicates of each kit and it was from sample, the same samples collected on the same day, right? So really Eight tried to put my collected. scientist hat on. Yep. I only had two replicates. I didn't have three replicates, but you know, it's about the best I could afford at that point. So, and it was kind of expensive. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, sent those in, got the results back and they were, I, to me, very informative, fundamentally sort of changed my views on these epigenetic age um, tests. So they ranged from um, 42 to 63. I was like 53.75 years at the time I did the test. Um, and the standard deviation, I can't remember, it was either seven or nine. So mean of my chronological age, standard deviation of seven or nine, um, uh, which, you know, I look at that data, I'm not a statistician, but I know enough statistics to say that's completely useless. They converged on my chronological age, but with a huge variation. And even intra, like so, so that varied between the tests. So I think three of the four were reasonably close to each other three of the four companies, the, the duplicates were reasonably close to each other, but the individual tests were far apart. And one of the companies, the the individual replicates was 20 years apart. So to me, and 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 some people will say, but but maybe, you know, the true diagnostic test is great and the Elysium test is terrible or the tally health test is terrible and the other one is great. Maybe, but how do we know? So so my sort of take home is that the direct to consumer biological age testing industry is a complete mess <laughs> and I have no idea who to believe or if any of them are actually giving accurate data. I know some of the people at some of the companies and I have my personal feelings about who's trying to do it right and who's sort of a charlatan, but across the industry, it's really hard to know. So I, the last thing I'll say on this is the, where I've sort of landed is I think these are really good research tools. I think the direct to consumer component has gotten way ahead of itself. And I think I align with what you were saying about the way you think about these tests is I'm, I don't think there's a lot of value in clinical practice right now because we don't know, we don't know precision or accuracy. And I don't think you can make actionable recommendations based on these tests. Furthermore, they fail in the one thing that I think they're attempting to do, which is, and I usually use this illustration with patients. So if I have a 40 year old patient who says, I really want to do one of these tests, I say, if the answer comes back and says you're 20, is your expectation that you will live another 70 years? Conversely, if the answer comes back and says 60, is it your expectation that you will live another 30 years? In other words, is this number predictive of future years of life? 
Because right now we have this thing called chronologic age that is the single best predictor of future years of life. So do we think biologic age as determined by these tests is better as a predictor of future years of life? Which by the way, would be very testable. Like how many people have contacted you to get ITP sample data to say, can we predict how much longer these mice were going to live? The answer to the question is obvious and very well known. You can tell if you have a your 40-year-old patient and he or she is fat, doesn't exercise, eats mostly cheeseburgers, you know that their life expectancy is probably not as good as the 40-year-old patient in your, your next waiting room that uh, has extremely healthful habits and whose parents live to be 100. So it's... And there's tons of published right, but I don't need a biologic data. age right, to right, tell me right. that. That's yep. what I'm saying. Yep. There are tons of things you can measure on individuals Four or five of them are all you really need to ask of a 70-year-old. Yeah, MetLife does this yeah. really, really, <laughs> really <laughs> well. Because their money's on the line there. They're, they're writing life insurance policies, right? So it's not at all hard to dis to figure out a very small set of tests to tell you how long a 70-year-old is likely to live. There's nothing to do with methylation clocks right, that, or that, things like that. To me, like that's that. the gold standard. When yeah. life insurance companies yeah. start using biologic clocks yeah. as the cornerstone of their actuarial algorithms, yeah. I'll start to I be- I don't think we're that far away from that though. Again, I, I want to- I want to- I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but you guys keep saying biological age when what you mean is epigenetic age or epigenetic tests, Not necessarily. Right? And we should explain to people that there is a difference because the- so, so some of these clocks- use solely epigenetic measurements. All so of they, the, not all, most of the direct to consumer ones are epigenetic yes. tests. But some of these tests use a litany of biomarkers yes. inclusive of epigenetics. Yes. So they'll say, we have, we, we've sampled your methylation pattern, but we also looked at your vitamin D level, your glucose mm -hmm. level, your cholesterol level, and a whole bunch of other, you know, things. And we compressed all of that into a number as well. So I guess, let me frame it as a question to you, right? So let's take the epigenetic piece out. Again, I, I do think we will get to a point where the technology is developed far enough and the quality control is good enough on the consumer side that these tests will be better than just chronological age. Yep. Um, but so you've got- Sorry, just you, you're saying- I think we can get there. I think-, I think that's a big statement. I don't know that I'm disagreeing with you. Yeah. I just want to make sure I mean, we I understand I think it's clear the from the research, unless you think that all of the, the research that's been done on these epigenetic aging clocks, clocks is somehow flawed, it's clear that you can create algorithms that can predict specific methylation patterns that are, that are more highly correlated with life expectancy than, remain, than chronological age. But I think the big but here is that even if that's the case, they would not be as good as what Peter would predict after all the tests Which that is you run your biological age. Through. That's what I want to get to. Yes. yes. And I think what you are actually doing is looking at other biomarkers that have a long-term clinical history that you're using to come up with a surrogate, but really is reflecting largely biological age, maybe not completely. And this is the other point I wanted to make is I don't think biological age and health are equal. I think they're strongly overlapping. And certainly you can identify many ways to to reduce health without accelerating biological aging, right? I think that's easy, right? We can all think of ways to do that. So let's let's take a minute and try. Yeah. So <laughs> let's think about this for a second. I have seen very impressive data where we can look at tissue samples of organs and we can tell, okay, I'm going to show you a sample of nephrons. And we just based on nothing but the methylation pattern, we know that if I just said to you, one of these is a 20 year old, one of these is a 50 year old, and one of these is a 70 year old, it's very easy to predict based on the methylation pattern, which nephron came from which person. Sure. Completely agree with that. Yeah. I mean, things, there are a lot of things that change with age. The literature has 25,000 things that change with age. Uh, average amount of methylation at these 10 spots is uh, number 11,407 of those. So great, you've got another thing that changes with age. So that's the question. But that's Matt. not enough. Right, so do you believe that all of the research we're seeing on the epigenetic clocks is going to be the 78th variable that we would include in our gestalt of- I don't know, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So I am hopeful that um, epigenetic 
algorithms can get to the point where they can replace many, certainly not all, but many of the other biomarkers that are being measured. I think the thing that gives me hope is we know that we know that epigenetic changes are part of biological aging. This again is a different question, but if we look at the hallmarks of aging, epigenetic dysregulation is one of the 12, right? Some people will argue it's the most important one. That's a different conversation, but it's at least part. So that gives me some hope that we are in fact measuring something that plays a causal role in the aging process. And I think what's missing, I think what would give all of us a lot more confidence is if we had a mechanistic connection to the specific methylation changes and some cause of aging or age-related disease. In other words, this change in methylation changes this particular gene's expression level, which changes the rate of biological aging, right? Uh -huh.